It's Wizard Fu with another game development video. I got the three-dimensional fog working and I'm I'm happy with it. Check it out. Got things set up a little a little bit of a crazy way right now where the clouds are really bright. So we got these pink and yellow and cyan colored shot uh clouds and they're moving along. But check it out, they're moving in a three-dimensional way. I'll turn off God mode so it's not quite as crazy. But if I see if I rotate the camera, the clouds are always moving in a consistent three-dimensional direction. And if I turn on God mode, I could run to the ends of the arena. And we can see that it's they'll get to the end of the arena and then they'll fade out a little bit. Kind of depends on the camera angle if you can see it. Let's go back a to this camera angle. Oh, these are going far enough you can't even really see it. Oh, there. So you can see them fading out now. So this is pretty cool. All this really is, is um, it's taking the, it's basically creating a bunch of clouds over the entire arena rather than the, just the screen. In Songbringer, I had a, some, a cloud effect similar to this, but it was um, only for this the current screen you were on because Songbringer only had one screen at a time. But this is a big arena that um, a bunch of different players will be interacting in and battling and you know and all that. Uh, so these clouds, see, it w it looked really weird when I had this going on where the clouds would get to the edge of the screen and then get back to the end of the screen because if you move really fast around the arena with it just with just with the clouds moving across the screen, it looks really weird. They're not they don't look right. But now this looks really accurate with uh, the three-dimensional movement and the clouds uh, appropriately moving around. You see I got some pink dots in the middle of each cloud. That was to help me debug things. For a while things were going crazy. I couldn't figure out why when I moved a cloud around and its movement position. Um, if I uh, if I got to the edge of the arena it wasn't they weren't fading in correctly and then when I got to the other edge of the arena they weren't fading out correctly. It was all because um, I had the anchor point for all the clouds in the lower left and so if I rotated the clouds you can see actually some of these clouds are actually rotating as well as it moving um, and that rotation around the lower left being the anchor point was causing them to be in crazy positions nowhere near uh, the center so using a, a anchor point in the very middle of them uh, really helped and if you don't know what an anchor point is it's just basically like pin the tail on the donkey that's where you pin the pin it it's where you pin whatever sprite or object it is that you're you're transforming um, so let's look at some of this code that made this all happen um, a lot of this is I stuff I pulled from Songbringer and then commented out huge sections and then rewrote sections until I finally got it all uh, dialed in um, but basically what it's doing is uh, it's setting up some um, some initial variables and loading some sprite frames and seeing which different frames it has for certain animations. That's all not quite the core of it all. The core of it is down here where it's choosing hues. Um, but the, here's, where, here's where the really important stuff starts happening. It gets the entire arena size, right? It sets up a wind vector, and then it sets up a perpendicular, perpendicular vector to that wind. And then the movement for the clouds is based on the wind um, and that maximum size we got from the arena. And then the spacing is based on the perpendicular. So it's basically, it's it's uh, the movement, for example, is going straight to the right, or that's in a positive x direction. And then the spacing, it's spacing them out in the perpendicular direction, which would be positive y, or straight up. So, um, and then it goes in and loops over however many clouds it's going to create, and um, sets up its other, tons of other variables, like its scale of this cloud, the XP is the X percentage. You could think of that more of like a movement percentage. So each one of the clouds is actually um, moved along its movement a certain amount um, right at the instant. So that so that all the clouds don't that the instant they're created, it's it's already at a certain position. So it's not like all the clouds are starting on the left and all moving in a perfect line. It's that they uh, they all have a, their own space. And here's Here's a temper. Here's a structure I created f just for the fog. It basically creates um, a sprite, and it's also got a plane for the uh, the dot in the center. That's just for debugging at this point. But it kind of looks cool. I like having the single little dot there. It gives it some somewhat of a 
um, some sort of particle effect, it seems like. Um, then there's the pause zero, pause one, which is just basically the starting position, the ending position, and then a nudge position as well. So it actually, it's actually nudging the cloud a little bit here and there in a sine wave pattern, and that gives it just more of a natural feeling. And then there's the elapsed amount of time and the period of time or the duration that it will uh, take for it to uh, get fill up its elapsed and get to the start that over the next period and then it's got an opacity max opacity for that that cloud so once um once all these variables are set up it starts it creates a um a fog structure so it pushes back another one of those fog structures gets it and then creates a sprite and then sets up the sprite um once again that anchor point was super important to have it at 0 0.5 and sets up its scale, color, um, and there's that that debug dot, and then here's the rest of the structure being set up. So it actually determines its margin. This is kind of important to get it to to get those clouds to look really nice. So they fade in when they're once they're when they're outside of the arena, they're they're already fading in, and then they cover the entire arena, go past the arena, and then start fading out. That took that was probably the most time consuming part of all this was just getting that straight. But that was um, two things. One was the anchor point, but the second thing was the getting the margin perfectly accurate. So this is get, getting the margin based on the sprite's actual texture size because there's actually four different smoke animations or four, four different smoke sprite frames, you could say, and um, a circle gradient, um, a spiral gradient, a few different spiral gradients. So there's a bunch of different textures right and each one of them could have their own size so getting that to be perfectly accurate so that the actual size of that texture times its scale really really helped and then this is the part where i was talking about how it just it nudges or it moves um each one of the fog structures along its path a certain amount so it just sets up the elapsed part of its timing um right there at the beginning when it's setting up the structure and then it's, each one's got their own period the movement is um, is combining the wind with the spacing, or the movement with the spacing. Um, or no, no, this is that doesn't actually use movement. This uses movement. This is the fog pause one. But in essence, what it's doing is it's picking a point on the y axis and then picking a point along the x axis axis that's that it's already moved. But it's basically just moving it from. 0.0 to 0.1 actually let's look at the actual math when it's animating the fog so there's two two big components of the code here one is um where it creates the fog and the next one is where it animates that fog so in the render system it goes and creates the fog when it's creating up the render system and then when it's animating the render system it always calls animate fog so animate fog loops over each one of the fog structures ticks its elapsed maybe subtracts it if it gets past this period but here's where the math happens basically it's just computes an alpha which is just elapsed over period that's your alpha percentage, zero to one. And then that is mixed. So we take those two positions, the pause zero and the pause one, and it mixes them based on its alpha. And that's its current position in 3D. So, and then to turn it into a 2D position, all we do is project it with just a matrix multiplication on the 3D position to get the 2D position, rounds it, subtracts the camera pause. Um, and there you, that, that's just, that's how you get the good 2D position. And uh, here's where it's nudging it. This is really not that important in what it's, what it's actually doing right here. It's just basically barely moving the position a little bit to get it to look more natural, so applying the positions. And then set, setting visibility was a little bit tricky at first, because that, but that was only because the anchor points were wrong. Once the anchor points got all dialed in, it was pretty easy to figure out how to get a sprite to be accurately visible. Um, and then setting the opacity. The last thing I have to do to this whole fog system which is, it's turned out to be a whole system worth of programming just for this fog. Uh, but the last thing I have to do is turn this into a batch node. So every one of these sprites will be a child of the batch node rather than the just a child of the view parent. And what that'll do is it'll save the render engine from having to set up each one of these sprites every time. It doesn't have to visit each sprite. It doesn't have to multiply all the matrices each time. It doesn't have to set up the textures that the different you know setup basically there's a lot of preparatory work going on that you have to do with OpenGL or whatever rendering engine you're using um, and using a batch node can save you from having to do all that prep work for each one of the sprites if you're gonna have hundreds of sprites like for example there's 200 and 
I think it's about 250 sprites or so right now, just in the current fog. I mean, if you we run it again, you can see there's there's actually a lot of different fog. Um, and of course, of course, you know, in the game, it won't actually be with the fog this bright. I just made it all uh, set the opacity to 255, so it's super easy to see for this video only. So there you have it. There's some three-dimensional fog. I'm happy with what got created here and I'm happy to move on to some new things too. What I'm going to be doing next, there's a few little issues like if you see if, if I stand, let's turn off God mode. Something happens when I'm standing, when my shadow intersects with the jib shadow. I can't seem to make it happen, but there's a few, there's a few shadow issues I need to work on. Um, I want to make this whole scene start looking better too. For right now, I've just got these just super simple green um, bushes going on that all blend together into blah blah. So that's that'll be really fun to to go and actually add rocks and little bits of debris on the ground and different bushes and maybe some grass and things like that. That'll be a really fun thing. I'm gonna start that next week. Um, and also dynamic lighting. As far as like having a light sitting there, like a like a flickering firelight, for example, let's say with this bush was on fire, had some flames coming out the top. The flames are the easy part. The dynamic lighting is the hard part, making the light actually flicker. The shadows actually change their length and their their projected positions and all that. That's going to be tricky, but um, will be well worth it to have that really cool dynamic lighting going on. And um, and it's, you, you can actually see what's. That's the issue I was talking about a second ago. The shadow looks really weird at this weird angle where, see Jib, as he's animating, he's erasing pixels behind him, so it's causing